In this video, I'm going to talk about interrupts and use the timer and counter as an example. An interrupt is exactly how it sounds. When we write a program, we create a main routine, and within that main routine, we have a never ending loop. Within this never ending loop, we generally provide um, code to check for button presses, or maybe we're blinking LEDs or displaying something on an LCD, or we're providing information for a menu system or whatever. Interrupts can be used as an alternative to polling. Generally, when we're in our endless loop, we're polling for um, a timer, let's say, when it reaches a particular number, then we have it do something when that, when that happens. And that is polling every single time this thing loops. In an interrupt, we could have it break the program flow um, automatically in hardware, and it will go to special event code that performs the same code that you would have had in the never-ending loop where it, it uh, matched that condition. For example, while it was going into this never-ending loop with our timer, we were constantly checking if the counter was equal to 2,232. It would go around and it would check it again, go around, check it again, until it finally matched uh, the number 2,232. In the interrupt version of um, writing code and event-driven code, what you do is you just inform the main not inside this loop uh, that you want to um, have a register equal to 2232 and automatically, this is outside of the outside of the never ending loop, and never ending loop, it would automatically pause the program flow, go to the event code, which will blink the LEDs, and then once this is done, it will go back to the um, where it left off and continue processing this code. Using interrupts saves quite a few cycles um, within the actual program's loop. Almost all of the features with microcontrollers can be set up with interrupts. You can have it interrupt with timers matching a particular number or count. You can have serial communication use interrupts to tell you when you've received data or sending data um, is complete. You can have an interrupt where uh, when a microcontroller has one of the pins high or low or goes from low to high or goes for, uh, from high to low. The completion of an analog to digital conversion and many others. There's even different combinations of interrupts for each one of these and you can also implement software interrupts. In our previous program we used Mr. TCNT to count for us and we had this never-ending loop that continued to pull TCNT1 to see if it was equal to 2232. In this version we're going to eliminate the polling and we're going to add another register Mr. OCR1A and Mr. OCR1A is going to hold this number 2232. Actually, it's going to hold the one second number. I'm deciding to do one second. 15, 6, 25. And actually, that's just the the number of counts. But the if you're indexing from zero, it would be 15, 6, 24. We also, in this never-ending loop, um, had to make Mr. TCNT1 zero again. But what we're going to do in the control register, the TCC r one b before we were using the the um, the prescaling of of sixty four and we want to add another control to this a switch called w g m which is the waveform generation mode and it will be set um, setting the switch uh, for the one and 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 two and we're going to set it to c t c mode and c t c means um, clear timer on compare and what that means is when it compares to 15624 with OCR1A, uh, then it's going to cause the TCNT1 to become zero again. So it'll keep um, counting from zero to 15624, <laughs> zero to 15624, instead of going all the way up to its overflow, which is 6535. For interrupts, we'll also need to set in the main routine um, the global interrupts, it's called SEI. And this is just a command that we use, very simple. We're also going to have to enable the timer interrupts in the TIMSK um, register. 
and this is this is actually just a a, um, a mask with a, um, it's just essentially a bunch of switches and we're going to be turning on one of the switches to enable the interrupt with the OCR 1A. The circuit that we're going to be establishing for this one is really simple. All it is is one LED. We're putting uh, an LED to pin zero on port B. So I have a wire going to a resistor. This is 330 ohms. Then it goes straight to a, an LED. Um, and then it connects to the to the negative pole. As a starting point, we have our shell of a program, our main with the infinite loop inside the main, and we have the basic include statement here. To um, enable interrupts, we need to first include another header file, and that is include avr forward slash interrupt dot h, and right inside of our main main routine, we need to use the global interrupts command. And that's just simply SEI. Um, the SEI uh, with the parentheses is just to enable the uh, global interrupts. We can go ahead and initialize our LED. We're working with the LED on port B. So we're gonna use our data direction register, port B. And I'm gonna use my, my or bitwise operation and just put a one in pin B0. Before we get into the nuts and bolts of the timer, uh, timer control and setting up the, the timer interrupt, I'm going to go ahead and put in our inter interrupt service routine, uh, just as sort of a placeholder. Um, I'm going to use a parentheses, this is where a vector goes. And then just below it, we're going to put in our block of code. Okay, so whatever, whenever the um, the timer reaches the number that we desire, which is going to be fifteen thousand six hundred and twenty-four, um, it will enter this particular code block and then run whatever or um, execute whatever commands we have in this code block, and then go back to the never-ending loop and continue where it left off. <coughs> so let's go ahead and put in our timer control switches. So we're going to use the timer control register for the 16-bit, which is one, and we're gonna be accessing the register B. And we're gonna use the OR bitwise operation again, and we're gonna put a one in the CS10. We're gonna put another one in the CS11. So this CS10, putting a one in CS10 and CS11 will give us 64 prescaler. And then we're going to put a one in our waveform generation mode. <coughs> the one um, is, is represents the 16-bit, and the 2 just represents that there are more than one uh, waveform generation mode switches. There's actually, I think, three of them. And then our next line is going to be the timer mask. The timer mask is timer in, um, interrupt mask. And we are going to do the same thing, bitwise OR. And we're going to be putting a 1 in the output co um, compare interrupt enable for the 16-bit and A. And this is going to be associated with the OCR1A. We also have an OCR1B and an OCIE1B as well. We could use that as an alternative. Now we can go ahead and access our OCRB, OCR1B register, or 1A register. And we're going to make that equal to the, the number that we want it to compare with the TCNT1. So we're going to go ahead and put in 15,624. And when it reaches, when the TCNT1 reaches 15,624, it's going to it's going to reset back to zero because we have the waveform generation mode invoked. And we, um, we are setting this one to 15,624, which is the compare register. Believe it or not, our main routine is actually finished. There was no, no more information needed in this. We need to update the vector because this is where our, um, when it does hit this number, it's going to, when the TCNT1 hits this number that is located in the OCR1A, it's gonna go straight to this routine here. Um, and I'm going to make it blink the LED that's on port B. And we're gonna use the XOR bitwise operation. And it's located at pin B0, our LED. I forgot one really important thing, and that's naming the vector. I need to name the ve vector. Number one, 
compare, we're going to be comparing A, and this is a vector. So now we should be fine with the making and programming. Okay, after making and programming it, it appears that the LED that we have on pin 1 is in fact blinking at 1 second, or it's toggling at 1 second. So first try was a charm, and that is how you use interrupts and using the timer as an example.